If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. Our first step in solving this question is to draw a picture that captures the information that's being described. So an airplane starts at City A and travels 200 kilometers to the west to City B, and then it travels on to City C for 300 kilometers at an angle that is 30 degrees north of west, and so we've shown that angle right here. We're trying to figure out the straight line distance directly from point A to point C. Now it turns out that we can do that in terms of vectors, and oftentimes it's helpful to organize our vectors into the following table. We have vector A, B, and B, C, and then we're going to find the X and Y components of each of these vectors. We can see that vector A, B lies exactly along the X direction, so the entire 200 kilometers will be the X component. It's pointing to the left, so we have to make sure we call that negative 200 kilometers. There will be no Y component, because again, the vector points exactly along the X axis. Vector BC is acting at an angle, which means it's going to have both an X as well as a Y component. We can see from the picture that the X component points to the left and the Y component points upward. Furthermore, the X component is adjacent to the 30 degree angle, so we're going to end up using the cosine for that X component. In other words, we will label it 300 cosine of 30. The Y component is opposite of the 30 degree angle, so we'll use the sine. So that will become 300 times the sine of 30 degrees. The Y component points upward, so it will be positive, but the X component points to the left, so we have to make sure to call it negative. We'll fill those components into the table. Next, we're going to add the X components down the table to get the X component of the resultant, and then we're also going to add the Y components down the table to get the Y component of the resultant. So you can pick up your calculator and add negative 200 to negative 300 cos 30 and you should get negative 459.8, and then we'll add the Y components together, and you should get exactly 150. Now, what I prefer to do with my resultant X and Y components is to draw a new triangle. We have a negative X component, so starting at the origin, we will move along the negative X direction and draw a straight line, and then we have a positive Y component, so we're going to go straight up. And then what we do is we label the magnitudes of those two components. So the X component had a magnitude of 459.8, and the Y component had a magnitude of 150. And now the resultant, which is exactly what we're looking for, will simply be a line that projects from the origin to the tip of the last vector that we drew. And in order to find the magnitude of that resultant, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have the hypotenuse squared. Notice the hypotenuse is what we've labeled the resultant is equal to one side squared plus the other side squared. We would square root both sides to solve for R. And when we simplify that, we get approximately 484, and the unit would be in kilometers because the other distances were measured in kilometers. So that represents the answer to part A, the distance from city A all the way out to city C. As for the direction, what we can do is find this angle here. We'll notice that that angle is projecting north, or up, of the westerly direction. So whatever we get for the angle, we're going to express it as north of west. To find that angle, we're gonna use some trigonometry. Specifically, we can use the fact that the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side of that angle, which would be 150, over the adjacent side, which is the 459.8. And then to actually calculate the angle, we take the inverse tangent of both sides. So the left side just becomes theta, the right side becomes the inverse tangent of the 150 divided by 459.8. And when we calculate that on our calculator, make sure your calculator is in degree mode we get approximately 18.1 degrees. So the final answer would be 18.1 degrees north of west for the angle. For part C, why is the answer only approximately correct? Well, let's take a look at a drawing of the Earth. Of course, the Earth is roughly shaped like a circle, and so when an airplane flies from one city to another city, it has to follow the contour of the Earth. So it actually follows a circular path, and because of that, it's gonna actually have to travel just a little bit farther than the distance that we had calculated, because we calculated a straight line distance. Well, to travel from city A to city C in a straight line would require burrowing your way through the earth, and of course, airplanes don't do that. So the actual distance would be a little bit longer because we have to fly from A to C along a circular path rather than a straight line path. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.